Hello everyone, my name is Ke and I'm from University of Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to present our work, a file system for safely interacting with untrusted USB flash drives. And this is a joint work with Zhi Hao and Ke Ma from Shanghai Jiangdong University and my advisor Sebastian. Nowadays, most storage has moved to cloud. We store our data, photos, and music on Google Drive or OneDrive. And overlay enables us to share or edit the same document in a group. However, the USB flash drives remain popular because there are many legacy data stored in the flash drive many years ago, so people are not willing to upload them to the cloud services. And sometimes there is no network connection, so the flash drive remains the only way for users to share data between different machines. And people prefer to store the confidential data locally, like the Bitcoin keys the medical records, and the ID photos. However, the USB stack has several issues. The first is the trust by default design principle, which means that the operating system or kernel has no way to authenticate whether a device is trusted or not. And devices can bypass kernel and access memory, which makes the DMA attack possible. And driver codes tend to be buggy. There are many drivers by third-party producers, and the device can masquerade as other devices. For example, it could declare to be a keyboard. And all these issues could be exploited by a malicious flash drive, such as a well-known rubber ducky. There are many previous work that try to solve this problem. Cinch and USB filter use a way of packet filtering, which means that they set up specific rules to filter out certain traffic flow of USB devices and prove USB use the way of device authentication to say whether a device is trusted or not. And good USB sandboxes the device and monitors its behavior. However, all this previous work has some limitations. The first is that the malicious payload that changes dynamically could avoid the rule-based detection, which makes the packet filtering less powerful in this case. And device authentication usually requires new hardware or kernel modifications. And sandboxing the devices can sometimes give us false negative results, which means that a device is malicious, a sandbox says it's okay. In this work, we propose RBFuse, which is a file system that assesses flash drives without interacting with the USB stack on the host machine. The key idea is that we remap the memory space of host controller to a virtual machine and exports the file system of flash drives as a mountable virtual file system. In our system, while IOMU, the flash drive is connected to a virtual machine and it runs a VFS server. And on the host side, we run a VFS client and the flash drive is exported to the user as a USB directory. Our VFS client is built on top of client of views. So there are two parts of it the user space daemon, and a fuse kernel driver. When user try to create a file called full on the USB directory, VFS client will translate it into different file system requests to the server. First, it will issue a get attribute to the server to see whether there is already a file called full. After server executes this, and it turns to the client that there is no such file. So the client could issue the second request make node to create the file and the server execute this operation and return to the client saying succeed. So the client could issue the last request get attribute to see whether this file exists now. And after execute this operation, the server would tell the client that full exists now. So VFS client could tell the user that all operations that has been finished now. However, this design has several issues. First one is that as we can see that there are too many requests for assessing metadata, such as get attribute. For example, when you try to read 1,000 files, the VFS client will issue 3,000 different get attribute requests to the server, which will definitely bring overhead to our system. And for when you try to write content to a certain file, the VFS client will try to split them into smaller chunks. In this case, if you try to write one megabyte to a file, the VFS client will split it into eight different requests to the server. And for the read request, it's the same issue. They are split into smaller chunks. 
And there are some cases if a malicious and only specialized are connected to our system at the same time. So if the malicious flash drive has some way to compromise the virtual machine, that would bring some several security issues to our system. The first one is that the confidential data stored in the USB flash drive, when you try to read it from the honest flash drive, it might be stolen by the malicious flash drive. And the files transferred between the honest one and the host side could be tampered by the malicious flash drive. And the malicious flash drive could issue mail from the file system responses to the client to try to crash the host. And in our system, the only way for a flash drive to communicate with the client is by sending and receiving the requests and responses. So the password becomes a very important part in our system. However, the truth is that if the parsers are not designed carefully, it could be easily compromised to exploit memory errors and integer overflow. So in the rest of our talk, we like to see how we address those challenges in our systems and show our preliminary evaluation results and discuss some potential extension of our current work and draw a conclusion of our work. So first we like to see how we optimize our system. We try to cache the metadata so that get attribute could be done locally at the VFS client side. The way we do that is we try to cache during initialization. The RB fuse will try to fetch and cache the metadata of all files and directories during initialization. Initialization here means the flash drive is first connected to the, our system. However, as you may know that the metadata can be updated very often by requests such as make note and write requests. So when the VFS client issues that request, they would update the metadata accordingly. And when you try to read content from a file, the VFS client will try to split it into different requests. In this case, if you try to read one megabyte from a file, it will be split into eight different requests. However, we use prefetch to exploit the spatial locality of read requests. We read subsequent checks for a large file. In this case, the VFS client will, read, will send the first request and then get back all the content of this file. So after we execute the first request, all the remaining requests could be done locally at the VFS client side. And there are some cases when you try to read all files in the directory. In this case, there are eight files in this directory. So the VFS client would issue eight different requests to the server so they can get all, all the file contents. And we also try to prefetch some content. We read other small files in the same directory when we execute the first request on the server side. So after we sending the first request to the server, we can get all content in the same directory. So the F2 and F8 could be read at the VFS client side locally. And for the write request, we try to combine all the write requests into one so that they can be sent only once. Also, instead of simply the write request, there are many other requests that is related to the write operations could be merged further. For example, one typical pattern for you to copy one file from the host machine to the flash drive is you first try to get attribute to see whether there is already such file, and then make note to create a file, and then get attribute to see whether it exists now and then open the file and write to it and close the file descriptor. And all these operations could be merged together into one. And in the batching mode, since we delay the operation execution, we need to speculatively respond to the request first. The way we do that is we monitor the remaining size of flash drives to see if the size would permit some operation. For example, when you try to write 1,000 megabyte to a file, but the remaining size is only 10 megabyte. So such requests will be denied by the, our system because the size does not permit it. And for the case where a malicious flash drive try to steal content from the honest flash drive, we can add the optional hardware adapter to encrypt the all read and write contents. After the honest flash drive is connected to the adapter, it runs a process like the TLS. Only the two endpoints, the adapter and the VFS client side, 
to see the unencrypted content of the honest flash drive. So the malicious flash drive has no way to steal the data. And this is what we use for the, our adapter. We build our adapter on top of the Big One Blackboard. And for the parser and serializer, we base our parser and serializer on every parse, and the code of parser and the serializer are automatically generated by it. And those codes has been formally verified when it is generated. So this could avoid vulnerabilities such as memory errors. And we also do some preliminary evaluation. For the virtual machine and host machine, we both run Ubuntu 16.4. And the adapter we use is built on the BeagleBomb Blackboard, which runs the Debian 9.1. And we also use Firebench to run all our experiments. And our baseline is that the flash drive is connected to the host without any of our mechanism. The first evaluation we do is that we try to read and write one large file from the flash drive, which is 500 megabytes. The main takeaway is that RBFuse itself would bring little overhead for, in this case. For write, it would bring about only 2% overhead. And for read, it would bring about 70% overhead. And after adding the adapter, it would bring about three to 10 times overhead. This is because the bad performance of the adapter and their increased round trips between the flash drive and the host. And we also try to read or write 1,000 small files, which is 16 kilobytes each. And the main takeaway is that RBFuse itself will bring two to four times overhead in this case. And after we add the adapter, when we write these files, it could outperform directly assessing, which means that it outperforms our baseline. But this is due to that the adapter could be viewed as another machine with Debian. So it has different performance on this task. And for read operations, after adding the adapter, it would bring about 8.8 .8 times overhead. This is due to that the adapter itself has bad performance on this task, and it will bring about two times overhead compared to our baseline. And next, we'd like to discuss some potential extension of our current work. Um, instead of what we have said in the paper, we also do some crash consistency tests. We modify and run crash monkey on RBFuse on two existing file systems, EXT4 and VF18. And EXT4 runs without any problems. Our system passed all the tests generated by crash monkey. However, in VF18, we found something very interesting. This is one case when we try to create a file but without writing anything to it. And then we call everything to persist it. After the checkpoint one, the full file should be persisted. However, both original VFAT system and our RBFuse on top of VFAT will fail that test. And we also know that there is another work Hydro tried, that tries to also do crash consistency tests on the existing file system. And their view is that if you try to persist what file, you need to call AppSync on the parent directory of that file so that the, the file could be persisted. And if the AppSync on the file itself could persist this file, that should be viewed as an additional crash consistency guarantee provided by the file system. And there are many previous file system fuzzings, such as Janus, they use two dimensional input fuzzing. The first input is that they found the Im base image of the file system, which means that what the file system contains, what files is in the file system. And then they try to find the client program. They try to find what is executed on the file system. However, in our setting, it's a bit different because we assume that the flash drive might be malicious. So that can be viewed as a kind of malicious file system server. In our system, the only way for the flash drive to communicate with the client side is by sending and re receiving the requests and responses. So we like to find the malicious messages from the file system server to see whether that could crash the program runs on the host side, especially our client program, so some part of it runs in the kernel mode. And for formal verification, our main statement is that 
The VFS interface is small and has better defined semantics than USB. So we can try to do formal verification on all our system to try to get the virtual file system interface right. So as a conclusion, we propose RBFuse, which is a file system that assesses flash drives without interacting with the USB stack on the host machine with reasonable overhead. And the potential extension is that we can do some crash consistency tests and do server-side fuzzing and formal verification on our system. And that's all of my talk today. Thank you for coming, and I'd like to take any questions or suggestions that you may have on our current work. Thank you.